Hi again, everybody. Welcome to the Sabres Reloaded, the video on this channel. If you're new here, that talks about topics and the topic I'm going to throw out to you guys today. Once again, let's go with goaltending. I think we should talk about goaltending because folks, I'm more concerned and not, you're not going to hear me say this very often on the channel. I'm more concerned about our goaltending this year than I even am about our physical play heading into this season. I think we got to really make the right call here heading in because if we lack physical play this year and we lack some elements, let's say guys, let's be honest here, what if our power play this year isn't as good? I know last year it was right up there and then it went like this, but what if the trend continues like this and we become a bottom 10 all of a sudden this year in power play? And what if, our, what if our special teams just suck? I think we're going to be better this year, though. Ah, I don't think it will. I think we'll be better this year at penalty kill with the additions. With, uh, you know, Clifton Johnson. I mean, we're, we're getting the right kind of guys there to be out there grinding and clearing the puck and hitting players. And we're going to be okay, I think, guys, this year with the penalty kill. But I'm a little concerned about the power play because Tage kind of slowed down. But let's not forget he was hurt. You know, let's not forget that. So I'm, I'm going to, um, let me get a drink. I'm going to look at it from the angle now that goaltending has to be priority. Uh, it, it's priority than even picking up that physical forward that I want. Yes, getting the other goalie in place. I need, I need to see what they're going to do. Uh, I'm a little concerned about it, guys. I really am. I'm, I'm a little concerned about the goaltending this year because if we go with UPL and Levi, and you guys know I'm one to say on the channel, I'm a big believer. You don't have to go play your whole career in the minors to make the NHL. I just don't buy it. Some goalies do, the majority, but some goalies don't like Levi. Levi's not going to have to play in the minors to get his game going. I just don't think he ever will, really. I think he's going to be an NHLer and that's it. Will he go through some young struggles? Probably. Yeah, and there'll be some struggles where our fans or our own fans are going to say, we should have sent him down. Well, I don't think we're going to. I really don't. So I would get that idea gone and uh, think of a, a secure plan B for when Levi is learning because I don't think it's UPL. I just don't. And the truth is, I don't think it's Comrie either. And I think our, our weakness is, put it this way, how would you guys feel about the season? We start the season 8-1-1, one, and one, okay? I'll give you a scenario. We start the season 8-1-1, and, one, and, and Levi's playing awesome, and in game number 11, he pulls his groin, and he's out for months. How would you feel about our playoff chances right now? That's what I'm talking about. This is why I think we have to get something secure because if we're going to go, if Levi gets hurt, and I'm going to go with that assumption as a possibility, if he gets hurt, what happens to the season then? Are we all going to bitch and complain? We should have went and got a goalie? Yes, we are. We are. I guarantee 90% of the people that come on this channel are going to be pretty upset that Adams did not get did not secure the team. You know, think how you feel guys about 2006 that we had $11 million in cap space back then, back then when it was 39 million and we had 11 million in cap space where we could have went and got two studs with that money and we didn't to secure the team. The owner went cheap and it cost us a Stanley Cup possibly because you guys seen what happened at the end. It was call-ups basically. Right? I mean, we, everybody got hurt, it felt like. If we would have had some more depth on the team, maybe three players within our organization, something. You know, who knows how that would have turned out. But I'm not here to whine about 2006. I've done enough of that to myself in my lifetime. Moving on. I, I don't want to get caught in that scenario, guys. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to get caught in that scenario where we are... <sighs> struggling because I don't know Levi's out and uh, and our goaltending is just not cutting it I, I don't want that to happen that worries me that does worry me with Levi in the lineup I'm sure we can make the playoffs this year but what if he's not 
and we're down to Comrie and UPL to get us in. It's going to be a tough road. I'll tell you right now, it's going to be a tight road. Both are inconsistent. Both have really good nights, but both don't seem to be able to go through long stretches of closing the door. You know, I, nobody, I, I don't want to put Hasek out there, but let's use Hasek just as an example. It's not fair to do, but remember how Hasek would just shut the, shut the league out. He'd do it a year at a time, but no, he would shut the league down for like two weeks where six games would go by and he might let in five goals in those six games, stuff like that. We need to secure ourselves with a veteran goalie. And that worries me if Adams, Adams is gambling if he doesn't. That's how I feel, guys. I really think it's a gamble. And it, that worries me. It, it really worries me because then he's banking, there could be no injury to Levi. Or that Levi couldn't have a, a, a bad stretch. He's still a young man, you know, he's still a kid. He could have a bad stretch, but at the same time, I, I get how strong he is mentally, I do. I would still like to have him in the back of his mind feel secure that we have this veteran like a John Gibson, okay? And let's say they're splitting duty, which I think would be the right thing to do. I would, I would have 1A, 1B. If we get a really solid vet, I would have Levi still developing. You make sure he's getting... I would say at least 35 to 40 games this year. And Adams, I'm guessing, is probably thinking Levi can hold 55 games this year. And then at two thirds of our games, I'm pretty sure Adams is thinking Devin Levi. What he's not thinking of if he doesn't get a veteran with Levi is that potential injury. You know, and potential injury is something I'm very, very aware of since 2006. So. I don't know. It, it's, it's in the back of my head, guys. I would like to, to secure the net with a veteran presence. Um, it doesn't mean the veteran has to play more than half the games, but just to know he's there when Devin wants to bounce ideas off of him and talk to him and this guy take him and pull him aside and say, Devin, calm down, relax. You're going to have bad nights. And I've had at least 100 bad nights in my career. Like, he needs that. He needs to have a guy that, that he can respect because he seems to be that kind of young man where he'll respect his elders, right? That guy that can take him aside, pull him aside, talk to him and say, listen, you know, you're going to have nights like this no matter what, you know, this is the best league in the world. You're going to have nights like this. This is going to happen again to you. I don't know when, but it will, but you're going to have more good nights than bad nights, you know? And this is what he needs, I think. He needs a calming presence. You know, it's not having Anderson, Levi might feel it this year is what I'm saying too. Just Anderson not being around, I think Devin Levi is going to feel that when he's gone. If I'm making any sense here. I don't think UPL can calm down Devin Levi and I don't think neither can Comrie. So we better look at this. It's just, just where I'm at with it, guys. It's one of those things that I'm worried about because I don't wanna see this season slip out of our fingers because we made one decision too less that, than we should have going into this season. If we have the calming presence in that, put it this way, how would you guys feel if we acquired John Gibson tonight? We get John Gibson for the next four years. How would you feel about our nets now? with him and Devin Levi. You feel great, right? I'm sure most of you would. And I know some of you have it where you're hoping UPL cuts the team. He might, he might. I'm not saying he won't, he might. I just don't believe he's in Adam's plans. I don't have any proof. We'll see eventually. I said this years ago about uh, Olofsson and I got rattled on my channel about this because people were like all upset and hurt. And I just don't think Olofsson's one of those Stanley Cup pieces. I just don't believe he is. You can't have a guy out there that is one dimensional in the playoffs. You have to have 200 foot players in the playoffs. So, you know, that's something that has to be instinctive too. You can't always teach it, it has to be instinctive. So what do you guys think? Any other options? Let me know. Besides Hellebuck and Gibson, who else could we get? 
not much out there, right? There isn't. So I'm a little, I'm worried about it. I am. I would like to see it addressed. And then if we get that addressed, I'm really not going to panic about the forwards going into the season with the power forward. We'll figure it out. I'll leave it at that. All right, guys, done for tonight. I've yacked and talked enough. I'm glad I got some videos out to you. I wasn't sure if I was even going to make it. I just woke up before. I said I got to get on these. Let me process them. See you tomorrow.